Hi everyone, my name is Abdul Chohan. Very privileged to have the position of being a board of advisor to Stellas. This particular conversation is going to kind of start off with the six most expensive words in education. So, what are the six most expensive words in education? We've always done it this way. Six words. We've always done it this way. What we do know is the role of technology is changing significantly. Everyone that we know around us, no matter how technologically illiterate a person might be, they have a mobile phone, people are moving towards mobile banking, the way we even connect with our doctors and get information is through technology. This has had significant impact in education because organisations like the World Economic Forum have kind of advised us that actually the world is a changing place with respect to jobs, what employers are looking for in terms of skills, in terms of uh, the ability to kind of work remotely, the ability to use technology effectively, the ability to work as an individual and as a team is shifting. And all of these skill sets inevitably um, have technology uh, at it as its foundation. The vision for technology does not go beyond a modified kind of level. And what I mean by that, and quite often I refer to this as translation. So what I mean by that is, is that before technology, what the children were doing is they were writing in books or completing worksheets and so on. It was a pen to paper approach. Now that the students have technology and the teachers have technology as well, and it might even be a device on a one to one basis, all that has happened is it's the same document, the same worksheet, but it's on a screen and the children, instead of completing it pen to paper, they're just completing it on a screen. This is translation. <music> DNA of learning is kind of structured around these four pillars. The first one is direct instruction. This is about the teacher explanation being captured. After direct instruction is independent practice. So any school that you go to anywhere in the world, practice is the ability for a, a child to be able to demonstrate that they've understood a concept and an idea. Equitable access. So equitable access is a really powerful term. When you have 20 children in the class, you, don't, you have 20 different children in the class. Every child learns in a different way. Every child wants to be able to show their learning in a different way. Research suggests that high quality verbal feedback can accelerate learning by eight months. Assessment is a huge part of education. It allows educators to pick up on misconceptions. There's a lot of publications that have been put out around responsibility for digital use. And one thing that I would certainly point people towards is the DQ publication. If you do a search for the World Economic Forum and type in DQ, it stands for Digital Quoting, um, you'll get this kind of wheel that is breaking down digital literacy um, into lots of different things. And of course, um, those of you that have been onto the Stella website and looked at all the literacies that are there, one of them is actually around digital literacy. So I know some of the work that we've done with DQ in schools, getting children to recognize that actually a digital footprint is a real thing. If I create something and put it on the internet, that's gonna be there forever. It stems from the idea that good schools are consistent and outstanding schools are consistently good. So what do we mean by that? If we're an outstanding school and we're saying we're consistently good, what we're saying that any child can come into any stellar school, go into any classroom, and they will never get a learning experience that's going to be less than good. The amount of time that children have in front of their parents is a lot more, significantly more. So a strategic approach to using technology effectively is to make the learning visible to parents. So what we want to do is to support the children's learning at home rather than here's a worksheet that the children will be doing. What we want the parents to be able to see is the conversation and the learning, the support, the discussions you know, the key concepts, the central ideas that are being presented to their children in school being made available 
in a humanistic way to parents. AI is changing the landscape. The speed at which we can now create content is really powerful. But what interests me is how we will be able to train students to be able to use AI effectively. At this moment in time, most people are kind of just typing in questions into chat GPT. But actually that's a whole skill set. It's called prompt engineering. And there are various models that can be used to interrogate AI. What is the information that we are looking for? Who is the audience that we're presenting it to? What kind of timeline are we looking at this to do? What language should be used? So there's lots of prompt engineering approaches and some workshops that hopefully in the future that we will be doing with teachers. So AI is a super interesting thing in education. It's changing lots of sectors uh, in the real world and no doubt education is one of them. Yeah.